All right, welcome back. Welcome back. This time we're going to work on a war machine subduer. Starting with golden skin, zero nine zero nine two. So, a subduer is a monstrosity belonging to the mercenaries faction. It's used exclusively by the Sethlics, which are these subterranean boogeymen that have dug people and turn them into mindless drudges and these hulking brutes. So, picture the Incredible Hulk with weapons instead of hands and you're pretty close. Monstrosities get most of their brains cut out or literally just meat puppets. And they had all sorts of horrifying surgical procedures done on them and turned into living weapons. So, Cephalix are mercenaries. They're a little odd that you can only take Cephalix on with uh, mercenary theme forces that specifically allow them. Whereas normally you can take any mercenaries you want. You can still use them as normal in factions they'll work for, which is exclusively Crix. In terms of actual stats, monstrosities are about as easy to hit as any other heavy, but are less well armored. They do have maximized damage grids, so they can really take it. They don't power up like warjacks do, they don't lose focus between turns either and gain focus when they are damaged by an enemy attack. And unlike drudges which have at least enough independence to carry out their orders to the best of their ability without a cephalix monitoring them, monstrosity well, their heart will beat, and they will breathe, and that's about all they can do on their own. The Cephalics do not want one of these things getting out of their control. And a subduer is equipped with a net gun that reels in targets, as well as a heavy cleaving blade. Sounds like I'm getting that weird echo effect again. Okay, I'm going to stop that before it gets annoying. Alright, trying this again. No idea what causes that weird echo. As soon as I can figure that out, I'll figure out a way to make it stop happening. All cephalics are psychic to a certain degree, and they have psychic powers rather than magic, but in terms of game functionality, Privateer Press said they didn't actually need to make a completely new system to reflect the cephalic psychic abilities since they function close enough to focus. After all, in terms of a game, you need to keep things as simple as you ha can for the purpose of making it playable. And no sense in making a completely new set of features that just mimic something that already exists in a slightly different way anyway.
And well, I got this fairly recently. The reason I'm painting it now is I really want to paint my Ceph or I really want to play my Cephalix again. <laughs> and I haven't been able to since third edition came out when the points costs changed. And then 09143 yellow bone. Because, yeah, his uh, spine's poking out. And a bit of the fiction about the monstrosities is that Seth folks actually open them up, pull out their organs, soak them in various alchemical solutions to harden and strengthen them, and pop them back into an expanded body cavity. Bruise purple zero nine one one nine. That scream you may or may not have heard is just some big grade uh, monster movie I've got playing in the other room. So we'll watch in between takes. Good gravy. Yeah, this one's been fighting me for a while. Now we'll start with that to see how far we get. Uh -oh. Trying to prop that up somewhere so the paint goes inside. Among my other interests are I do collect B-grade movies, in large part thanks to my favorite show, Mystery Science Theater 3000. One thing I may do eventually are movie reviews of the best of the worst, but if I do, that's going to be a long way off. I might talk about some of the movies I have during some of these painting videos, which I've kind of done before, but not something... Not really a full review. I might want to review some of the more obscure games I have in my collection too, but basically it's something that more prominent YouTuber has touched. I am not going to do a thing with it. After all, what's the point of reviewing a certain bad movie or a bad game if Four out of five other YouTubers have already done it. Okay, well that was just enough to get that job done. All right, put the white. There we go. Zero nine zero six two leather white. Let's see how much of this I can squeeze out. Oh, well, that's about empty. Time to get the spare.
This one's jammed up really good. There we go. There we go. That should be enough to do the bandages. This isn't too going out. This isn't going very well. So the colors a little too wet. I may have to do the base coats in two steps. So perhaps the scariest thing about the Cephalux is their overall goals are unknown. What is known about their goals is they don't run contrary to Crix's goals since the two groups work together. Okay. I think that's all the bandages. I'll go ahead and let that dry for moving on to more base coats. Okay, now that the base coats have had a chance to dry, or at least the first layer, uh, Terran Khaki 09122. And this is going to go on the net itself. So this will do her in game. Captures things with its net gun, reels them in, and gets to make a free hit against them with its blade. Net itself does no damage though. That's okay. Because the blade does plenty, especially when you take into account all the crazy stackable buffs the Cephalics have access to. And what's fun about the Cephalix is that once you do get all these buffs stacked in there, you can get your basic drudge grunts hitting as hard as the monstrosities can. And then this bit here looks like it's fibers connected to the net, at least that's how I'm going to interpret it. This chain is definitely a winding mechanism.
brass, I think, 09197. Terribly faded label. this on the braces and a lot of the I don't know if armor but functional parts mostly bracing around the various parts of his body to hold him together or to hold equipment onto him. Right now in the game, there are only heavy monstrosities for the Cephalix to use. But when they first came out, the end of second edition, there was mention of light monstrosities, but there hasn't been any mention of that in the second edition, or sorry, third edition, which makes me think they dropped the concept of doing light monstrosity altogether. Go ahead and do the buttons here in the brass. That looks like a functional component there. These hoses coming off are going to be a different color. Go ahead and work on the winding mechanism here. The most horrible aspect of all this cephalix monstrosity and drudge surgery, aside from no anesthetic, is that they apparently do the lobotomization part last, though that is not completely technically correct in a real world sense. It's a approximate parallel most people can understand. Be a little tricky. The chain itself will be steel. I'm also, trying not to hit any of the actual flesh. I don't know if I can help it anyway.
need a little more paint. Walk it over here. So I suppose some might question why this subduer doesn't have a more lethal ranged weapon. But its name implies the subduer is actually meant to capture, not necessarily kill, though it is capable of the latter. Since the Cephalix need people to turn into drudges and monstrosities, their goal in combat is to take as many live prisoners as possible. something their alliance with Rex has helped them immensely with. Though in the last bit of fiction where the Cephalix and Crooks were mentioned, it seems that there's some tension there. Though not enough to threaten their mutually beneficial alliance. The exact terms of which are largely unknown based on what I've seen, but it does involve a certain amount of live prisoners out of every engagement to be transferred to the Cephalix. The first Cephalix models appeared way back in the first edition. And what was odd was they were originally Crix ally models, with allies being models belonging to a main faction that could be used in certain mercenary armies. But per their rules at the time, the Cephalix couldn't be used in any of the existing mercenary charters you had to use in the first and second editions. It wasn't until the end of the second edition, with the introduction of the rest of these, that Cephalix finally got to do an all Cephalix army. Just a spot here of the bronze I just saw. Another interesting thing, based on at least the Mark I rules, was that it was implied that Suffolk's drudges are actually modular. And dredges are very similar in appearance to this monstrosity. Head covered up, arms replaced with weapons, they're just human sized. And look like they're pumped full of steroids, which they probably are. Let's see, and probably that gauge. As opposed to being engaged to measure steam pressure or other engine function, this is probably meant to monitor vital signs. Let's 
see here. Okay, I want that trying. I don't want to be able to color. Uh, 09002 deep red. Just a bit of that. That's going to go right along the uh, old tongue tie there again. It's going to go right along his spinal column and off to the sides. Because the cephalix literally opened his poor schmo up and started doing stuff to him. This is exposed muscle tissue. Then zero nine two zero six tarnished steel. Yeah. Might have to replace that one too. It seems a bit thin. Weights at the end of the net. Just the chain, not the housing it's connected to. Just a spot of bronze. Hit that real quick. blade. Need a bit more of that tarnished steel. Gonna hit all these nuts and bolts and screws all over his body.
Just trying to make sure I got them all. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that dry. Then finish up the last base coats. Okay. Last two base coats. This one's really tiny. Oh, 09044 tan skin. Just a tiny dot of that. Because this is just going on his nipples. Why? Because it's a detail. It's there. I may as well do it. And where's the other one I'm looking for? There it is. Zero nine zero eight nine cloudy gray. Gray is going to go over all these hoses going in and out of his body. Yeah, this whole mess of cables coming out of his back. Keep the brush moist, but not too wet.
Just gonna double check, make sure I got them all. There's one more under his neck here. Okay, that looks like all the base coats. Let that dry move on to shading. Okay, shading time. That was a little odd. Oh, the joys of technical difficulties. Aged pure 09196. And that's cash. And yeah, this is an awkward way of gripping this, but doing it all for your benefit so you on YouTube can see this.
All right, next shading. There we go. Zero nine zero eight eight stormy gray. All right, we'll go ahead and let that dry. Yeah, should have enough time to do this while something else I've got in the works is going. Pipes. Want that excess out. Again, this happens. It's nothing to worry about too much. It's also why you want to work highest area to lowest area when you're shading. And zero nine two zero five black and steel. Bring the gray seat down into the chest. So, right, let's blot that out a bit. Not too worried about getting the flesh with any of this because that's going to be the last color I shade anyway. A lot of these rivets and screws are actually separate pieces that are optional. And that takes care of that for now. Looks like three colors left. Okay, next the purple dusky grape. 
zero nine one one eight. And stained ivory, zero nine one four two. And that's just going along the exposed spinal column, not caring that it's going to get in the muscle. Then zero nine one two one khaki shadow. It's probably way more than I need. That on that bundle of fibers and the net itself. And purple got on a bit of a machine. I'll just go ahead and blot that out there. It's going to leave the white and the flesh tone and the muscle. Okay. Zero nine zero six one linen white.
Okay, that gets the bandages. Go ahead and do the muscles. Where is it? Red brick. 09001. And by muscles, I mean the ones kind of sticking out of his back. along the sides of this chasm here. There's the base, the spine there. And that should do. Let that dry and can move on to the flesh. Okay. Finishing up the shading with ghoul skin 09148. And going over all the flesh with this, because this is not healthy skin. This is chemically altered steroid adult skin. And the cephalix, that term people in these drug infused monstrosities do not care about the long term ramifications. Large part to the fact that they use them as cannon fodder in a literal sense.
And I nicked the metal there. Easy to fix. Go ahead and thin out just a little more and run it down here. Because again, this is not healthy tissue. This is, again, chemically altered steroid adult tissue. And that should give it the appropriate ghastly pallor. And let that dry and start highlights and details. Okay. 09039 pure white. It's going to go in this little slit in the head here. This It's not really a visor because these monstrosities don't actually see with their eyes anymore. And since the arc's going to be a bright yellow, go over the area with white. The yellow shows up better. We'll let that dry and finish up with highlight in a minute then. Okay. That's the wrong color. Zero nine one zero one ruby red. Okay, that mixed it properly. I had trouble with this one. That's better. Just need a little bit of this. Get it really thinned out well. It's just going to go in this little slot, this visor, though monstrosities don't actually use their eyes to see anymore. And we'll take 09008 Sun Yellow. And that should be enough. And we're going to fill in the arc with a faction appropriate color I picked out quite some time ago. So now it's just making everything match. And when that dries, we'll finish the highlighting. All right, go 
golden highlight, And that's a nice, unhealthy looking skin tone there. And 09045 tanned highlight. And it's just going on the nipples. Too much just like that. And we'll take 09039 pure white. Nope, it's actually probably going to be enough. It's going to go inside of these gauges here. Not worried about that needle that's gonna get painted a different color in a minute. Uh, there we go. Khaki highlight zero nine one two three.
and 09063 Ghost White. And zero nine one two zero faded purple. It's in pretty rough shape. It might be as good as it's going to get. And zero nine zero. Is it? A minute. Yeah, zero nine zero zero three. Blood red. Don't need a whole lot of that. Inside that gaping wound in the back there. Zero nine one four four creamy ivory. And again, not a whole lot of that. Nozzle is clogged in a weird way. Slightly getting the exposed spine there. Zero nine two zero seven true silver.
Apparently I nicked the tip of the blade earlier and I didn't catch it. It's alright. Gives it a bit of character. those greens sticking in and out of them. Making certain to get the chain. It's all the steel. Zero nine one three eight tarnished brass. around those gauges. Start working on the head. A little more of that brass there. Hopefully, not too much more.
That's pretty good. Go ahead and take a little more of that blood red now. Where's the brush I want? There it is. Carefully paint a red part of the gauge here. Just like that. And using the rest of the paint and trying to do a wash, we'll just dab that. And the other part that's a bit much. in those parts of the gauges. And 09090 Misty Gray. Try brushing these hoses. So with some caution, I see I missed a piece of the brass. Let's go ahead and brighten that up. Like that. And all these pipes coming out almost give the impression of dreadlocks. Of course, if you felt like getting really ambitious, you could paint each wire and tube here a different color. I think those are more tunes for fluids than wires. Okay, let's see where we're at. Yeah, just about done. Okay, now we'll go ahead and finish up the arc. Getting out 09037 pure black. That's plenty. Small brush first and carefully painting the dial there. Or rather the needle on that gauge. And we'll go ahead and take that same cutting mat from all the other War Machine Hordes videos I've done. Get it centered. Carefully Get the edges of that arc.
very carefully filling in all around. So the wall down here was just a bit thick. That'll get it. Let that dry and finish the basing. Okay, now to finish. Taking 09039 pure white one last time. I'm not going to bother squeezing any out. So yeah, that's dry. So right from the bottle there because we're just putting a Roman numeral on the back. And again, this is just to help differentiate for my own convenience. Much easier on game night to uh, just write a one on the protective sleeve the cards in, than to say this card's for the green one or this card's for the blue one. All that dries. We'll mix up the glue solution again. Elmer's glue all. That up pretty good. And get that in around the feet. And this is one of those bases with that lip that'll help catch water so it doesn't go anywhere. The solution will be more accurate. Nice even coat, and now dip in the block. Check that around, tap off the excess. Get the dry brush, just push it off anywhere you don't want it. And we'll go ahead and let that dry for a bit. Okay. Last step is seal the flock with scenic cement. And again, this gets kind of tricky as it gets closer to empty. Might be enough. Just real carefully. Turn that around. Edges. I want it to look kind of moist, but not. Flock will really drink this in. That's got it. Clean that out really thoroughly. And there we go a mercenary cephalic subduer. Up next, starting the last of the Relic Knights.